the meeting tonight. Um, my name is Pete Laflamme. I'm director of the Watershed Management Division at Vermont DEC. And with me here tonight is Amy Palachik. Amy is the manager of our wastewater discharge program. Nick Gianetti, who is the manager of our, well, the supervisor of our pretreatment discharge system. And then running our team's link from the other side of town, thanks to technology, is Michelle Cole, who is the uh, supervisor of our direct discharge program. So we're all here tonight to talk about the pretreatment permit for the New England Waste Services Incorporated, the news uh, pretreatment discharge permit. This is, um, it, Nick will be running through a presentation of um, exactly what discharges this uh, pretreatment permit will cover. But the uh, reason we're having a meeting here in Montpelier is uh, the city of Montpelier and the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility has issued an allocation to news for uh, treatment of their leachate here at the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility. So although the meeting tonight is about the news um, pretreatment discharge permit, it does involve the city of Montpelier's wastewater treatment facility. So hence, we're here in Montpelier tonight. We've got folks joining us online. We have folks here in the room. And again, Nick, when he walks through the agenda, we'll talk about um, how to sign up to make comments. That is the primary purpose of tonight's meeting. We'll hit some of the high points explaining the discharge, the pretreatment discharge permit to you, but really it's about hearing from you. So we want to collect your comments tonight. Nick will also talk about how to, how to uh, provide written comments if you would like. We'll collect all of those comments. We won't be responding to them tonight, but we will provide written responses to all of the different comments we receive at the end of the public comment period, which is uh, November 8th. So I'm going to turn it over to Nick now. He'll walk through the agenda for the evening and then do a, do a presentation about the actual permit and its conditions. Thank you. Hi, folks. My name is Nick Gianetti. I'm with the food treatment section in the wastewater management program, which is in the watershed management division. Um, we're here today, obviously, to um, accept public comments on a permit that's currently on public notice for the New England Waste Services um, discharge. This permit is for the discharge of leachate from three landfills to the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility. It's a pretreatment discharge permit. We're going to run through a quick overview of the permit, and then we're going to open it up for public comment. Um, we're going to be alternating between in-person comments and virtual comments. Um, when folk, for folks in person, um, if you would like to make a comment, please indicate so on, on the sign-in sheet that was um, when you entered the room. We'll bring a sign-in sheet up here too, um, just in case you didn't get a chance to sign in or, or get a chance to sign up for a comment. We'll bring one in here before we start the comments so you could sign up. Um, if you're in person, you know, we'll ask you to come up to the table here, speak into the microphone, and make your comment. We'll record that comment. Um, and then for the virtual participants, um, there is an online form that we have for you to sign up um, to make a comment and to um, just indicate that, that you are present at this meeting. And that, that form has been linked in the chat of the Microsoft Teams meeting. And just as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. So as I mentioned before, this is the this public meeting is for the renewal of the New England Waste Services pretreatment permit. You'll hear me refer to this as NEWS or NEWS Vermont, which stands for New England Waste Services. And this is the second public hearing for this permit. We did a public hearing on Tuesday in Newport. And this permit regulates the discharge of landfill leachate from three landfills to the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility. The three landfills are the New England Waste Services, a Vermont landfill located in Coventry, the North Country Environmental Services landfill located in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, and the Central Vermont or CV landfill located in East Montpelier. This, a permit, this draft permit is effective, or this permit will be effective for five years. Um, however, it can be amended to incorporate changes 
And um, this facility has been permitted with the agency since 1994. So as I mentioned, you know, this, this permit authorizes the discharge of leachate to the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility. Leachate is hauled from the various landfills and discharged into the headworks of the wastewater treatment facility. Um, this permit authorizes a discharge of 60,000 gallons per day of leachate to the facility and a maximum of 1,200 pounds per day of biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD, to the wastewater treatment facility. BOD is a measure of oxygen demanding pollutants in the wastewater. These flow limits, the, the flow and BOD limits are based on the allocation or authorization issued to the permittee by the city of Montpelier. Um, so you know, the agency has adopted this authorization from the city into our permit. Um, you know, the way our pretreatment per program works is we can't authorize a discharge to a municipality unless the municipality has issued an allocation or, or authorized that discharge. So we're adopting that authorization in this permit. Two major changes of, of this section of the permit include the removal of the Newport Wastewater Treatment Facility, the Barry Wastewater Treatment Facility, the Burlington North Wastewater Treatment Facility, and the Essex Junction Wastewater Treatment Facility. Another major change in this permit is the change to the flow limit. The current permit for news has a flow limit, a maximum day flow limit of 23,000 gallons per day. However, there's a provision in the permit that allows that flow limit to be exceeded so long as the BOD standard of 1,200 pounds per day is met. We are proposing to implement a ceiling on the, map, on the flow that can be brought to the wastewater treatment facilities, which is 60,000 gallons per day. This is a change from the current permit. Currently, Montpelier receives an average of about 19,000 gallons per day of leachate and a maximum of 65,000 gallons per day of leachate. So this 60,000 gallon ceiling is actually less than, than the maximum they've been receiving um, in the past five years. We're expanding the amount of monitoring that's required under this permit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the monitoring for the leachate itself, itself being hauled to the wastewater plant. We're requiring monitoring for conventional pollutants, BOD, total suspended solids, and pH. We're requiring quarterly monitoring for a suite of priority pollutant metals. We've also added the following metals, aluminum, iron, and molybdenum. We are also now requiring monitoring for the nutrients, total phosphorus and total nitrogen, given concerns in the Lake Champlain Basin for nutrient loading. Monthly monitoring is required for per and polyfluoroalkyl alkyl substances, or PFAS. This monitoring right now is required via EPA's modified method 537 until a Clean Water Act approved method is released. Finally, twice per year monitoring is required for priority pollutants. Priority pollutants are a suite of toxic pollutants that include metals, VOCs, SVOCs, PCBs, pesticides, herbicides, and we're requiring this monitoring twice per year. Um, this scan is intended to identify pollutants that can cause toxicity in the wastewater plant or in the receiving water. The next condition I'll review is a requirement for monitoring at the wastewater treatment facility receiving the leachate. So we are requiring additional monitoring at the wastewater treatment facility. The purpose of this monitoring is to assess the impact on the of the leachate on the wastewater plant's operations, determine the effectiveness of the wastewater treatment facility at removing leachate pollutants, and monitoring the impact of leachate on effluent quality and its discharge to the surface waters. The monitoring we're proposing is quarterly monitoring of the influent, effluent, and sludge, or solids, for PFAS, quarterly monitoring of total metals of the influent, effluent, and solids, 
twice per year monitoring of the influent and effluent for the other suite of priority pollutants such as VOCs, SVOCs, pesticides, and PCBs. We're also requiring annual monitoring for those pollutants of the solids. The last bit of monitoring we are requiring at the wastewater treatment facility is for whole effluent toxicity or wet testing. Wet testing is a measure of how toxic the wastewater treatment plant's effluent is. And so we're enhancing the monitoring, increasing the monitoring of wet testing at the wastewater plant. You know, given municipalities accepting leachate, we want to ensure we want to ensure we have sufficient monitoring of the toxicity of its effluent. For this monitoring, we've defined specific locations and sample collection procedures to ensure that the data collected is representative and accurate. The next monitoring requirement we're going to talk about is monitoring of the Winooski River above and below the outfall of the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Plant. We're requesting seasonal monitoring above and below the Wastewater Treatment Plant for PFAS. This data is necessary to determine concentrations of PFAS in the surface waters attributable to, to the wastewater plant's discharge. This data is also necessary for us to, to determine site if site-specific water quality standards for PFAS are necessary to protect the environment and public health. We've, de we've defined specific methodology, collection procedures, and sample points to ensure accurate representative data is collected. And this sampling regime is consistent with our, with the sampling methods used in the states of the other um, surface water PFAS monitoring such as the monitoring that's being done to develop the statewide water quality standard and other PFAS surface water monitoring that we've done throughout the state. Final condition that I'll review today is the condition which requires the permittee to develop and implement a pilot system for leachate treatment. The goals of this study are to establish design criteria and an implementation schedule for full scale for a full scale leachate treatment system. Through agency review, ensure the leachate treatment system is properly operated, designed, and maintained to provide consistent and reliable treatment of the leachate, and provide the necessary information for the agency to develop a treatment standard or technology-based effluent standard for or leachate discharge to Vermont Municipal Coal Wastewater Treatment Facilities. The timeline of this condition, the first four months after the effective date of the permit, we're asking the permittee to submit a, a plan that outlines the details of the pilot study. This plan will identify the location of the study, the technology used, in the pilot study, the data collection plan, the, the duration of the pilot study. And that plan will be subject to public notice and public comment, similar to this draft permit. Within one year from the effective date of the permit, we'll be asking the, the permittee, we are asking the permittee to implement the pilot study and begin the data collection phase in accordance with the approved plan. Three years following the effective date of the permit, we'll ask for a final report on the pilot study findings. Throughout the duration of the study, we're asking for quarterly progress reports so that we can keep our finger on the pulse and um, see the data as it's being collected. Following the report, ANR intends to determine a full-scale implementation schedule and um, the develop applicable treatment standards. So in summary, some major take home points here. The draft permit is based on an allocation. The draft permit flow and BOD limits are based on the allocation from the city of Montpelier to the permittee. The draft permit is more restrictive on the, uh, the maximum amount of leachate that can be accepted at the wastewater treatment facility in a given day. There's a significant increase to the required monitoring of leachate required monitoring at the wastewater treatment facility, 
and monitoring of the receiving water as part of this permit. We're proposing a pilot project to collect data to support the implementation of a long-term leachate treatment solution. Public, commented, public comment will be solicited on this proposed pilot project and the compliance schedule associated with that pilot project. And as always, non-compliance with permit requirements is subject to agency enforcement action. This permit's on public notice until November 8th, at which time the public comment per period closes at 4.30 p.m. We're accepting written comments via the agency's environmental notice bulletin. That's our online platform for um, public notice. We're also accepting written comments via email. There's also, on the wastewater program's website, you can go and, and submit public comments and, and view the draft permit. We're also accepting public comments via mail. We have the mail address here to submit written comments. Um, you know, we'll be accepting oral comments tonight. We're limiting each commenter to two minutes due to the number of comments we're anticipating on receiving to give everyone a chance to speak. Um, if you don't get a chance to finish your comment, we recommend and encourage you to submit a written comment with the level of detail and data and supporting documents that, that you'd like to provide. So now we're gonna begin the oral comment period. Any person may submit an oral comment or written statements and data concerning the draft permit. All statements, comments, and data presented at the public hearing and that we receive electronically or in writing will be retained and considered in the formulation of the final determination to issue, deny, or modify the draft permit. Upon closing of the public comment period, we will address each comment in writing using a Okay, so, um, sorry about that. At the end of the public comment period, we'll address each comment in writing um, via a responsiveness summary, and that summary will be issued with the, the final decision of the agency. So, we're gonna begin the, the oral comment period. Just a few ground rules. If you'd like to make a comment, please sign up in person, you're in person please sign up on the sign-in sheet. I'll bring a sign-in sheet up here that um, folks can sign up on if, if you haven't already signed up. Virtual participants, please sign up on the form that was distributed in the chat box to make a comment, and we will call your name when it's your turn to comment. We're going to alternate between in-person and virtual commenters. We'll start in person. For those in person, you could come up to this desk here. We'll have a microphone set up and you could state your comment. We'll be recording that comment. For those virtual, when it's your turn to comment, your name will be called. And at that time, you can unmute your microphone and turn on your video if you'd like and make your comment. We're limiting each speaker to two minutes. And as I mentioned before, all comments will be recorded. So with that, we can get started. Okay. So the first commenter tonight is Ed Stanek. If you'll please come up and speak into the microphone so those online can hear you. My name is Ed Stanek. Uh, I'm a resident of Barrier City. I worked for a number of years for the state of Vermont as an active duty district coordinator. I use the Winooski River watershed and Lake Champlain. I'll provide my comments in writing 
I'm aware of the time limits. I have basically seven categories of comments. Number one, neither the fact sheet or the permit state a jurisdictional basis for the um, delegation of responsibility to News Vermont rather than the City of Montpelier for pretreatment. I'm aware of the provisions in the U.S. Code and the Code of Federal Regulations, but I couldn't see any reference to enabling Vermont legislation and regulatory provisions that allow that transfer of responsibility to News Vermont. So that was not a jurisdictional question, not clear from the permit of the fact sheet. Another jurisdictional question is it's unclear to me upon what basis ANR is authorizing the importation of leachate from another state. Uh, so I'd like to see some clarification of that. I take note that the town of Dora, New Hampshire, apparently has disallowed the discharge of leachate into their treatment plant because of the PFA content. Second comment has to do with leachate flows. Again, I reviewed the fact sheet and the permit and other documents. I think the, uh, the documentation is uh, incomplete and confusing at best, at least to the average person. Just three examples. Uh, the fact sheet at pages three and four do not provide leachate flows for the CV landfill or the Bethlehem, New Hampshire landfill. Second, while information is provided for the Coventry landfill at page two of the fact sheet, it's less than clear how those calculations match up with the adjudicated findings of the District 7 Environmental Commission in their decision at page 28, where the commission found an average of 9.5 million gallons of leachate resulting annually from phases one and four. And finally, just another example, the draft permit sets a maximum daily effluent of 60,000 gallons. It's unclear to me how that number jives with the third paragraph on flow on page four of the fact sheet. Category three, and I'll try and speed it up, neither the draft permit nor the uh, permit issued to the city of Montpelier that I could discern provides any pretreatment. Uh, so, my take, and I might be missing something here, is a pretreatment permit is being issued that doesn't really require any methodology of pretreatment. Uh, when I worked for the state 40 years ago as a young state employee, I remember going to the Public Facilities Division, and people at that point were explaining to me, I thought half in jest, half seriously, that quote unquote dilution is the solution. In reviewing the permit, particularly provisions having to do with 7Q10 in stream concentration, kind of brought back memory that principle of dilution being the solution. The point, of course, on a serious note is I don't see any actual pretreatment required by the pretreatment permit. Category four, it's very troubling to me that the draft permit is laced with quote unquote conditions subsequent. Conditions subsequent are impermissible. Uh, a regulatory system is supposed to ensure sufficient evidentiary proof that standards are met and not allow substitutes of conditions for adequate proof up front. And a perfect example in this permit is special condition number five, pages seven through 12 in the permit. This is the one that requires the pilot project, so-called, at the Coventry site. My reading of it is that it's premised completely on the standards established by the Brown and Cordwell study from October 2019. Um, ANR has not promulgated, promulgated any applicable surface water standards for PFAs that I'm aware of. Given the nine year long pendency of the pretreatment permit application, as stated on page one of the fact sheet, ANR could and should have undertaken appropriate rulemaking during that same time period in order to promulgate PFA standards for the applicant to implement as part of the amendment application required in special condition number five. Instead of appropriate and required rulemaking, ANR has chosen the path of an impermissible permit su subsequent. The net result of this approach by ANR is the privatization of environmental regulation. Number five, the draft permit has numerous conditions for testing and sampling of the waste stream. However, the fact sheet has no specific information on the strength of all PFAs collected at each landfill for delivery to the wastewater plant. Although there is vague reference to the January 2020 Weston and Sampson sampling results, it would seem that the fact sheet should provide such threshold facts. Number six, page two in the permit, section Roman numeral I, A, one, small b, disallows the, dis the discharge of leachate into the Montpelier treatment plant during, quote, storm events, snow melt, or when a storm event is imminent. What are the definitions for each of those terms? Who makes the decision to not accept the truckload of leachate? If so, where will the leachate then go? Additionally, with regard to the city's role in accepting the leachate, 
what are News Vermont's contract terms with the city, uh, and what is the amount of annual revenue that the city will obtain from accepting the leachate. And finally, number seven, uh, two of the most significant sources of solid waste in the Coventry Landfill Facility are Chitton and Washington counties. One supposes in the cynical analysis that there is an environmentally just outcome in that the quote unquote non-conventional pollutants from all those solid waste will now return to the watershed from, once, from whence the solid waste came. Uh, the Northeast Kingdom and Quebec have been the environmental sacrifice zone for Vermont's solid waste disposal. Chittenden and Washington counties will now join as a companion sacrifice zone. I encourage ANR to take the lead in returning the focus of the General Assembly to policies adopted over 25 years ago by the General Assembly aim to ensure not only the reduction in the waste stream, but a more equitable means of disposal. The burden cannot remain solely on the people of the Northeast Kingdom of Quebec. In closing, I want to emphasize that I am a realist. The solid waste generated by all of us has to go somewhere. Same thing with the leachate. But ANR's permitting processes and its role as the representative of the executive branch before the legislative branch over the decades have failed to pursue, if not force, a more and just system for the disposal of solid waste and leachate. And I want to be very clear, I do not fault the public employees of ANR, specifically those of the Department of Environmental Conservation, who merely do their jobs under the direction of supervisors and executive branch appointees. Thank you. And again, I'll see you in the Thank you very much. And just to be clear, give a little extra time have, uh, it seems, ample time in the meeting to take all comments. Uh, the first person for teams will be Shana Casper. Uh, Shana, please unmute yourself and state your comment. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. My name is Shana Casper. I'm a Montpelier resident, and I'm also the Water Program Director with Community Action Works. Um, and at Community Action Works, we believe that environmental threats are big, but that the power of well-organized community groups is bigger. And that's why we work side by side with communities fighting pollution threats in their neighborhoods. Over the last five years, I've co-facilitated the National PFAS Contamination Coalition, which is a network of 40 community groups from 18 states in Guam fighting PFAS contamination in their communities. And I work with folks who have had cancers and kidney disorders, and their kids have gotten sick, and they've had trouble conceiving kids. I am really terrified of PFAS, and I'm really grateful to not be a member of this group, but rather to be facilitated it, facilitating it. I really don't want PFAS to be impacting my community. You know, as I said, I'm a Montpelier resident. I care deeply about my community, and I do not want to take in this, this leachate. Um, and at the Montpelier City Council meeting last night, the city committed to developing a plan to eliminate the intake of PFAS into our wastewater treatment facility and to call for better oversight and monitoring by the state. Um, just like how Barrie and Burlington and Essex, and I just learned from Ed right now in Durham, are, are not taking in this leachate anymore as well. Knowing what we know about PFAS in our wastewater treatment facility and how it can not deal with this, these chemicals, Proposing this permit is, I, I feel pretty frankly, is, is embarrassing. Our current system does nothing to remove PFAS from landfill leachate. We know that there's significant environmental and public health concerns with PFAS. Going through the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Facility will just make us a point source that will then go on to contaminate the drinking water that's pulled from Lake Champlain. Additionally, the draft permit gives Casella too much authority over the development of the pilot project as it requires Casella, not ANR, to set parameters of performance and operation and evaluation of this pilot project. The draft permit also does not identify the source or volume of leachate managed as part of the pilot project. And kind of as that said as well, who's in charge here? It's like my parents giving me a few bucks in middle school and telling me to get a sandwich for lunch but knowing that I could just get chips and candy instead. Uh, ANR is expecting to develop and adopt surface water quality standards for PFAS soon as well. 
given that this will have a direct impact on the draft permit, I also want to say that we should reopen this permit once those standards have been adopted. We need to do, um, and then you know, finally here, we need to do more to achieve our zero waste goals and to divert recyclable and compostables from our landfills and to ban peat fast from all products immediately. Um, but that is not, uh, th those bigger picture things are not an excuse to, to not deny this permit. Um, so again, really calling on ANR to really take uh, into consideration the significant health impact that this um, permit can have on our community and communities downstream um, and to deny this permit. Um, and I'll also be submitting written comments. Thank you. All right, our next commenter is Casey Whiteley. Good evening, and um, my name is Casey Whiteley. I live here in Montpelier. I've been here for about 25 or more years. And before that, I lived in Charleston, Vermont, the Northeast Kingdom. Um, I just have a list that's probably going to be similar to some of the things you're already hearing, but I'll say them anyway. Um, some of the issues that I have with the with the permit, with the draft permit, is that first of all, ANR has not developed any water quality standards for PFAS, hasn't developed any regulations or performance standards specific to leachate pretreatment technology that would govern this pilot project. Leachate pretreatment technology, as we know, is, is um, in its very early stages, and we do not have data to verify what the effective or safe technologies are yet. Um, there aren't any regulations from ANR to govern and oversee this process. I have a real problem with that. Um, the permit gives over just way too much state authority to Casella to select the technology, select the pilot project site, monitor the safety, um, safeguard the public health and environment. Well, the state, the state needs to take responsibility for all those things, not, not the um, company that stands to profit from managing the leach aid. Um, let's see. Um, I was looking at your mission statement to preserve, enhance, restore, and conserve Vermont's natural resources and protect human health. And I believe that the state should be, this is not Casella's mission, it is A&R's mission. And so you guys should be in charge of this process, not Casella. Um, the permit contains a list of pollutants that are way outdated. Um, as someone mentioned in the uh, hearing up in Newport the other night, 101 of the 190 chemicals compounds found in the leachate are not even in this permit. A&R needs to do the research and establish your own standards just as you did when the PFAS were found in the Bennington drinking water. Asking the company that's generating the leachate to determine the standards and rules is just wrong. Um, I also believe the permit time is just unrealistic and not achievable. Um, one year to research and select the technology, none of which is proven yet. Select the siting, building it, developing the systems for monitoring and testing. Um, this sounds very uh, unrealistic, if not impossible to me. I don't think it's a good idea to rush all these components. So those are just a few of the points that um, can and should be made to shine the light on some of the shortcomings of the draft permit. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Our Thank you. Up next for teams, we have Lindy Sargent. Please unmute yourself and state your comment. And here we go. I'll try to. I know my with Microsoft Teams, my face is looking this way, so I hope it doesn't bother people to uh, go I'm talking to you all. And I submitted comments on Monday night. Um, I will submit more specific comments again. And my comments Monday night were on this lack of specifics, which has already been addressed. But after uh, attending and being part of that meeting, I really felt that. There was a lot of emotional uh, involvement in this for all of Vermont. So what I have to say is I am a member of DUMP, Lindy Sargent of Barton. 
Since A&R approved Costello's permit to expand the Coventry landfill, we at Dump have been watchdogs. To protect the health of the drinking water of our Canadian neighbours, we fought for the moratorium on any leachate going into Lake Memphremagog. After this, we specifically got in touch with Montpelier and Lake Champlain environmental groups to share concerns with them about now being the recipients of the landfill pollutants, including PFAS. Knowing that we in the kingdom had already been the dumping ground for the state, we realized what an awful burden this leachate is and would be. This is what the moral high road looks like, Vermonters working together to solve problems. We studied the Brown and Caldwell and the CEC reports about leachate treatment technologies, and they include percentages for the effectiveness of treating leachate that admittedly are termed assumptions. This is emerging science. Just last month, the, the EPA advised it would be studying ways to target landfill leachate because of PFAS. Why is ANR rushing this process in this permit, which is really a five-year renewal on a 2011 permit? It is critical work, but it needs to be done in conjunction with other states, with others in Vermont, and not with Casella. This permit is empty of specifics and contains virtually no regulations about building a pilot treatment project and facility. If listeners had logged in to Tuesday's meeting, you would have had your heart touched by the past passion with which residents spoke of the landfill's effects already felt in the Lake Memphremagog watershed. And of a lack of trust in News Vermont managing such a project. This is ANR's responsibility. Your mission pledges to protect, sustain, and enhance Vermont's natural resources for the benefit of this and future generations. It's time for you to take the moral high road and listen to these commit comments. Rework this pre-treatment permit, draft a separate one for a pilot project, and do what you know in your hearts is right for all of Vermont. Thank you. Our next commenter is Pam Lads. I'm taking my mask off. It's, I'm doing the recording over there. It's not easy to hear, so apologies if you don't like it. We have a dilemma here, and the dilemma is that water is our scarcest resource. We know that, but meanwhile, we're running leachate, which we know to be a toxic mess, whether it's filled with PFAS or a multitude of other chemicals, including the chemicals from pharmaceutical products that we pass in bodily waste, and that goes into the landfill and around and around. That's going into our water streets. In Montpelier, who currently are taking most of the leachate, it's going through the wastewater treatment facility, which is not able to process any of the PFAS and probably many of the other chemicals that are in there. Why are we stuck on reinventing the wheel for how to discharge leachate into a waterway? That makes absolutely no sense. I don't have the answer for this, but if we always do what we've always done, will always get what we've always got. That's a John Grinder quote. It's a very annoying quote in a lot of ways because it's really saying, if you don't like the outcome, do something differently. I don't like the outcome. The outcome is poisoning all of us. It is not safe. We need to do something different. Thank you. The next speaker on the teams will be Teresa Gerard. Please uh, mute yourself and state your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I, apparently I can't turn my camera on here, so um, I apologize. Um, I think you agree with many of the points that have been made here, specifically the lack of regulation and the need for the ANR to take a much 
bigger role in this and not leave it to a for-profit corporation. Um, and specifically, what I want to target is the fact that the information that's being utilized in this draft permit is old information. First of all, they're talking about having the permittee select a technology from a study that was done over two years ago. Um, a lot has changed since then. Also, the draft permit contains a list of priority pollutants in attachment B, which is identical to the EPA's list that was developed over 40 years ago. Many toxic contaminants discovered since then, in addition to PFAS, are in the leachate, and there is no requirement to monitor for those other contaminants. In 2018, Vermont did not just trust the EPA's regulation when it came to testing the water in North Bennington for PFAS. They developed their own limits. They need to do that now. The EPA's list is over 40 years old. In February of this year, a peer review paper written by experts from the University of Missouri and the USDA Forest Service prioritized landfill pollutants on toxicity. In their conclusion, they produced a list of the 40 most toxic compounds found in landfill leachate. 15 of those 40 compounds prioritized in this paper are not on the EPA's priority pollution list. Another study done by the U.S. Geological Survey found similar results. They analyzed leachate samples from 22 municipal solid waste landfills in 12 states, including Maine and Vermont, and they looked at 190 compounds, 101 compounds of those were found in the leachate, and many of those are not on the EPA's priority list. The Agency of Natural Resources' primary responsibility is to protect the natural resources of Vermont. It is not the responsibility of a pro for-profit waste management corporation to create rules that might be in their own self-interest. I am requesting that the ANR do the following. Determine what contaminants are in the leachate and monitor for them as part of this draft permit. Many harmful contaminants have been identified since the EPA's list was developed. This monitoring will provide a baseline of knowledge needed when specifying a system to remove harmful contaminants from the landfill leaching. How can you ensure that you're removing contaminants if you're not even sure what is in the leaching? Provide the necessary research and provide comprehensive requirements and specifications based on the current data and technologies with full transparency to the public. When determining what can be discharged into Vermont waterways, use the precautionary principle, can you prove that it is safe? Create a separate permit for the leachate pretreatment facility with public hearings and full transparency. Both the pilot project and the final facility must be located outside of any watershed of an international lake that is the source of drinking water for our neighbors to the north. Thank you. The next commenters are Richard and Margaret Lassard. Would you like to comment? The wife always gets the job. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Margaret Lassard. My husband Richard is here with me. Um, my comments are very selfish based. Everyone has had some very profound things to say about Vermont's needs in general. I'm going to speak about our needs. That's our property next door. We've lived there for 44 years. I have a neighbor here as well who owns across the road. Our entire community down here is very much impacted by the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Plant. There's two reasons that I submitted written comments, one of which you may dismiss me as being not a water issue, it's an air pollution issue. Unless you all don't have noses, you are aware of the odors that permeate this neighborhood because of the wastewater treatment plant. 
It has gotten worse since the leachate was accepted. It is, uh, even today, on a cool, somewhat autumnal day, it was oppressive down here. There does not seem to be any um, use of odor capture or filtration going on at the plant, which makes us wonder, is the plant capable of accepting all of this additional leachate and in addition to what it already takes from septic haulers and its own municipal needs? Um, I have addressed this in a letter to your board. Um, the other issue that, and again, I'm a lay person, I don't have all the profound knowledge about the PFAs and all the rest of it. In reading the uh, permit draft, it talks about an awful lot of poisonous chemicals and how they're going to be monitored for the stream. I have a deep well. My neighbor has a deep well. What kind of monitoring is going to be done or can be included for groundwater tables? How much of these pollutants are sinking through the stream mm -hmm. and into the groundwater that we are drinking? Uh, that's very scary when I read all of these chemicals and these learned people here today and tonight talking about very harmful chemicals that are going in on a regular basis. So I would like to know that my groundwater table is protected. And I would really like to know that the Montpelier Wastewater Treatment Plant is capable of receiving all of this leachate along with its ongoing septic acceptance and its municipal um, flows and it has the capacity to work in a environmentally correct man. So those are our concerns. Like I said, we're more selfish with our comments than rest, but that's the reason we're here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The next person for teams will be Polly Jones. Uh, please unmute yourself and state your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I, I want to second what your previous speaker just said, that um, not only should we be testing in uh, the, uh, you know, the leachate, but we need to, of course, test the groundwater, not only in Montpelier, but in the Mem for Magog watershed as well, because all of the uh, leachate that is not gathered in the Coventry landfill is flowing into the Memphramagog watershed, which includes a lot of wells around the perimeter. Um, I do want to specifically say I spoke on Tuesday night. Um, I will be submitting more complete uh, questions and comments. But just tonight, in reference to uh, the Central Vermont landfill, I have some questions. On page two of the draft permit, section 1A, ANR has increased the effluent limitations for the Montpelier wastewater treatment facility from 23,000 gallons a day to 60,000 gallons a day. If the Coventry landfill alone produces 60,000 gallons a day, where will the excess leachate from Bethlehem and Central Vermont landfills go? And when the Coventry landfill is expanded in its next ANR approved phase, it will produce 100,000 gallons a day. What then? Um, and it seems to me that if ANR is legally challenging PFAS producing industries and attempting to limit the sale of PFAS containing products in the state of Vermont, uh, shouldn't Vermont then have the right to ban out of state solid waste and leachate because we know they can, are loaded with PFAS? Um, and also, I just want to uh, restate that when will ANR or D DEC take control of our state's solid waste crisis and stop depending on the profit-making garbage industry from taking control? The, again, I say the tail is wagging the dog. Thank you.
next commenter is Henry Cope. Thank you. I'm going to take this off. I think I'm eight feet from you. I had prepared remarks. Uh, those who spoke before me were far more articulate than I can be. I just want to say this, this permit for renewal of the discharge, uh, acceptance of discharge leachate in uh, Montpelier should not be conflated with a separate issue, which is pretreatment by a pilot project in Coventry at the site of the uh, News Vermont landfill. Landfill to me is a euphemism. It's a trash mountain, 700 feet high, 78 acres in extent now, soon to be 129 acres. It's not a landfill. I, uh, I came to this strong feeling inside me probably 50 years ago when Charlie Nadu had his little 12 acre dump. I took my trash from Glover where I lived then every Saturday. One time I poured kerosene and paint <coughs> in my garbage. I knew I had it. We didn't have plastic sacks then. It was in the back of the pickup truck. And I saw Charlie push that, group all the Saturday morning waste from everybody who brought it in for a couple, three dollars. Pushed it all downhill and disappeared. I saw the reeds bend. I don't know that it all disappeared. That still, that image is in my heart. I'll tell you, when I learned about the expansion permit three years ago, I attended the Coventry hearing. You talk about, you will respond to our questions tonight. You will respond to them on the day you make your decision. That doesn't help us. You should change that process. Make an effort to respond to every individual question and testimony that you hear tonight and in, and in Newport. I remember a lady quietly. There were only seven or eight of us in the room. There were more Casella executives, lawyers, and A&R staff at the head tables than I think audience. I, 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 won't be, I won't swear to that, but that's my memory. One lady quietly wrote, raised her hand. She lived in Coventry on a ridge. She was of French-Canadian descent. She stated her name. And she said, I'm old fashioned. I've always hung my clothes and my kids' clothes out on the line to dry. I don't have a clothes dryer. She said, on the ridge where I live, I, I get continual smells and odors. She said, the other day, when I hung my grandchildren's underclothes out on the line, I heard, I smelled this awful smell. And I asked myself, what is in that smell in my nose that could be poisoned when I put the garments on my grandchildren's skin? And she sat down. No one made an effort on those panels to answer that question. No one ever, it was not in the response summary. I think of that lady. I don't even, I know her name. I've not talked to her the sense. But you ignored her plea. This is happening. I, I wanted to tell the Montpelier audience what happened in Newport the other night. There were 19, documented 19 voices online and in the audience who spoke in opposition to the idea of a pilot project on the landfill site run by the profit-making corporation. I didn't hear one comment in favor. I haven't heard a comment this evening in favor of either part of the break this proposal out in two parts at least we're we're pleading with you deny the pilot project you've heard better than i there's so many answer things it's too important a question to leave it to private industry that's your job to protect and conserve our environment that's the public's job i grew up honoring public service i was this close to having my own to taking a, choosing a career with the Foreign Service. I love this country. My dad was lost in World War II. 
because he loved this country. I, I cannot, this is, a, this is a political decision. You guys know it up here. What we say tonight is not going to matter. The governor, governor's race car was sponsored for many years with Casella blasted on it. He came to Newport and said there's no other option but the Coventry landfill for our solid waste. He ignored the legislative mandate, which Ed referred to 25 years ago, to put it in regional centers closer to the population that produces the waste. I, uh, to me, it's environmentally indefensible because the landfill should never have been placed up there. It's surrounded by 1,800 acres of wetlands. It's upslope and a half mile away from South Bay. The water goes to Canada. They use it and have for years and will continue to as their drinking water source. This is, that's morally indefensible. We cannot, this, this landfill site cannot take the burden. I call it a Vermont outhouse on the border of a Canadian drinking water supply. Is it not? There are more poisons in that landfill than there are in my, uh, you know, my camp's outhouse. I shovel that two or three times. I'm sorry, I've, I've no time. But think of the moral responsibility that you're taking when you make this decision. This landfill should be closed. Other sites should be at least evaluated. There's been no formal evaluation when Casella bought this 12-acre site, it was it was actually bought by a second owner after that, but they've owned it 28 years. I don't, I haven't heard of, I read a formal evaluation of the site. It would never be allowed by EPA standards today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, for teams, Marguerite Edelman, you um, mentioned you might want to make a comment. Please let me know. Do you, would you like to? Um, I, I think I would. Uh, I'm, I'm Marguerite Edelman. I'm in Winooski, Vermont. I also serve on a group called uh, the Vermont PFAS Military Poisons Coalition. Um, I am concerned for all the reasons that have been expressed already. Um, Shana said so perfectly, I am frightened half to death of PFAS, and I'm frightened for the next generation. I truly believe that it is our role and the role of our public servants and our government departments to protect future generations. And polluting the water with leachates and PFAS and all of these dangerous chemicals does not protect future generations. So there's such an outcry now about climate, but I also think that we need to be looking at the poisons, the environmental poisons that are ruining um, so much of our future and our, our children's future. Um, we also heard the term precautionary principle. I truly believe in that. I think. We know now from everything we've seen about PFAS and what's being re revealed about it that you know we've got to go beyond monitoring. We have to ban it, and not just five forms of PFAS, all 6,000 plus man-made forms. It's a whole class of chemicals, and the chemical industry is just using bait and switch continuously. Take one out and put another one in so that the public is so confused um, and complicated by this topic that you know all of these products now end up in our landfills. And the fact that, and I'm you know very pleased that Dump and the groups up in the Northeast Kingdom have fought so hard. But those of us who live, for example, downriver from Montpelier, we're gonna get all this stuff. It comes down to us. Um, the PFAS and all of the pollutants come down to us. And I live in a community where we have many new Americans, especially Asians, who are into uh, fishing. And they live off their fish. They eat everything they catch. In fact, our work with the Association of Africans Living in Vermont 
and other groups has revealed that to us. And I think it's just ridiculous that we should be putting this into our water and taking it from New Hampshire to put into our water. It's just beyond the pale. So I strongly agree with what others have said, that we need to deny the permit and separate the permits out uh, so that we might be looking at two different ones. We need in this state to start putting money into the research that will help us get this stuff out of these shades. Monitoring doesn't tell us anything, except how much stuff is in there. So the treatment, the part that's missing from the three treatment plan is the component that we need to be investing in for research. After, thanks. Don Pierce, would you like to make a comment? Oh, sure. I put a question mark on the form there because I didn't really know what I might say. But I just want to let you know that I do own property diagonally from this office. Uh, it's a Margaret has always called it that, and another property I have the most unique in the city because we're down here in the no man's land. Uh, I also own the house, which is directly across the street from treatment facility. Uh, and so the house is on the Dog River and on the Winooski River, and the, my shop is on the Dog River. So I'm concerned, obviously, about what goes in the river. Uh, we've uh, had the city dump, you know, the, the dumping into the river upstream from us, and we've uh, had all kinds of activity going on when there's floods and whatnot. And so, uh, similar to Mark, I do not have a well, the, the little, we call it the Little White House, across from the treatment facility is in Montpelier, and so I have Montpelier city water, drinking water, and uh, the shop on this side of the bridge, as we are here, is in the town of Berlin. So that's, uh, and I have no water there. Uh, basically that's why I own the house, so that I have the water system. Uh, the shop is now uh, an electrical contractor's staging facility, basically. Uh, and uh, the office that goes along with that shop was in the Little White House, and now it's off-site. But I'm concerned about, obviously, what goes in the water and what goes in the uh, river and, and the groundwater pollution also. And uh, as a secondary note, as Margaret said, is the uh, air quality and, and the air pollution, if you will, that we've experienced for about a year. Uh, I've been here since 91 in this facility that we were in Middlesex. And, uh, and never really, although we don't spend all day here, we quite often at the shop, uh, we haven't really experienced any uh, air pollution uh, odor, much like, much like we have this year. So that, that's uh, of, of primary concern also. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from Teams, F.E. Brown, would you like to make a comment? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I don't have, I was at the uh, Tuesday meeting. I live here in Derby and um, I have grown up um, adjacent to this lake. Uh, I can see it from my front windows. I um, have owned other properties and they've always been um, either within view or on this lake. I grew up as a child um, being able to swim, walk down across the field. I, I grew up here on a farm, walk across the field and swim in this lake. Um, my, my family was friends with Alice Lindsay who owned Lindsay Beach and uh, they allowed us to to swim um, even though it was um, a public beach um, there was a charge to get in but we were able to go and swim no charge because we're friends and neighbors um, being a neighbor at that time was was really important and we treated our neighbors with great respect um, 
we helped our neighbors as much as we could and they helped us. Um, I understand that there is a need for a renewal of this permit, I believe that was issued in 2012 for the pre-treatment discharge of the leachate and I would foresee that in the interim between um, a better idea of how to deal with leachate, I would foresee that this permit probably needs to be in place uh, to some degree. However, the pilot project is no way um, a part of a pre-treatment discharge permit. I don't know how it was slid into this renewal of this discharge permit um, and the pre-treatment part of that permit really is not pre-treatment at all. Um, as the lady from um, right there in your area, Montpelier, said, um, things are uh, a little smelly down there and I certainly can relate to that. Um, I believe that there should be no leachate in the Vermont watershed of any lake. Um, and I understand that there is, um, there are over 9,000 of these PFAS chemicals and there are chemicals also of emerging concern. So to ever um, allow any of these chemicals to be put into this drinking water reservoir or Lake Champlain, same thing. I remember when um, there were camps, there are a lot more now, camps and, and actual homes on this lake um, that drew their, their water from the lake. And I would assume there probably still are some summer camps that get their water from this lake. Um, as probably there are in Champlain, I don't know, but um, it seems to me that there should be a rule, no leachate in a drinking water source. Our clean water is one of our essentials, and we can't live without it and, and stay healthy. I guess um, my closing, I would say, what, what does the state of Vermont think of our neighbors to the north? And that's a question that I would like an answer to. Thank you for allowing me to share. Our next commenter is Don McDowell. My name is Don McDowell, and um, my wife and I have spent our entire adult lives in Vermont. In fact, my wife was born in Vermont. Um, we are one of those camp owners that still draw water of the lake, Lake Mepromega. And in fact, I've, I've been going to camps and cottages basically all my life. And um, we've never done anything but drawn water out of a lake. And what a sad situation it would be if we created a beautiful body of water like Lake Mephamega and we could no longer do that. I have neighbors next to me who think we're crazy for pulling water out of the lake. We use the water for bathing, we use the water for washing, we use the water for recreating. 
my grandkids go to the lake and jump in the water. I gotta tell you, I'm really concerned about what's going on. I'm very concerned about that body of water and what's going into it. You know, it's frankly a pretty crazy situation that we've got going right now. 2019, I believe it was, uh, Casella was granted an expansion permit for the landfill in Coventry, which I just, I just can't wrap my head around at all. I, it makes no sense to me at all. Except, you know, if you had some really awful, disgusting stuff, matter that you wanted to get rid of, where would you take it? Where would you take it? You'd probably take it just about as far away as you possibly could from where you were. And that's what we've done. That's what we've done. We've moved it to an area of Vermont where there's not very many people, there's not a lot of political power, and we've, been, we've put it on an international border too, which is just crazy. When I was at the August 24th meeting when, you, when DEC and ANR talked about water quality, I said, wouldn't it be interesting if it was the other way around? Wouldn't it be interesting if the Canadians built a huge dump on the border and the water flowed south and we own most of the lake? We would have a very, very different conversation now. And given that, I, I'm, I'm really concerned about the existence of this dump going into the future. I'm extremely concerned about this pre-treatment permit. Where is it going to be? Where is it going to end up? We don't know. Where's the concentrate going to go? The stuff that will be removed, where is it going to end up? What happens when we go over the 60,000 gallon limit? I haven't heard anything on that yet. And what about all the chemicals that aren't going to be treated? Yeah, we've talked about the things that will be treated. But we haven't talked about the ones that haven't, that won't be treated. My guess is probably because we don't know how to treat them, but they're there. And some of them are probably even more toxic than the ones that we're worried about, or the ones that we're, we're talking about. The five-year moratorium um, is great. Yes, it's wonderful that there's no leachate going into Ephraim Magog for five years, but that's not enough. Henry talked about this, I believe it was Henry. Um, you know, we, <laughs> We need to get rid of this dump in Coventry. Two months ago, I asked Secretary Moore, I apologize, Mr. Flam, I asked you and your three colleagues to begin the discussion of finding another place to put Vermont's garbage. It makes no sense to take all this stuff, all this garbage from Vermont and send it to the edge of the state on an international border and throw it in the ground and pretend like that's okay. And that brings up, of course, the precautionary principle, and other people have talked about it tonight. The precautionary principle is just common sense. Like, do we really think we're gonna put all that material in there? And we've been doing it for a couple of decades, and we're gonna do it for a couple more decades, and we're not gonna have a problem? Really? I am very glad tonight to say that Don McDowell is on the side of questioning this and saying this doesn't make sense. I think history will go back, historians will go back and say, who thought this did really make sense? Because there's going to be problems down the road. It is crazy to continue to dump garbage on the side of that beautiful lake, on the side of any lake for that matter. It is crazy to send all this solid waste to Coventry and then you know, just imagine all the trucks that are headed north. They're headed up to Newport, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to take all the leachate and send it all back down here. We're going to send it back down to Montpelier to be treated. That, does that really make sense? You know, I know. I, I, I promise I'm almost done. Of course there's going to be problems. The cross-chain principle tells us this. Uh, this stuff's not going to go away. Look, I'm guilty of NIMBY. I don't want it in my backyard, but you know what? It's been in our backyard long enough. It's time to put it in somebody else's backyard, and I know people don't want to hear that. And I apologize to the people in Montpelier, that uh, people along the Minnesota River. If 
but it's got to go somewhere else. Enough's enough. I'm an ecologist. I was trained as an ecologist. Um, I'm a limnologist. I've been teaching about limnology and ecology my entire professional career. I've been waiting for the science to come out. I've been waiting for someone to talk about the science in this. I'm not hearing it. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. This is about politics. It is, because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Um, I'll also, I'll just end with this thought, because I have gone on long enough. August 24th, Casella didn't talk. Two nights ago, I wasn't there. It was my birthday, but it was my wife's birthday, too. We both had the same birthday. But Casella didn't talk that night, either. I haven't talked yet tonight. Why isn't the permittee talking? Why aren't they explaining why this is such a great idea? Why aren't they telling us why we have nothing to worry about? That's what I'd like to hear. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, uh, there's nobody else on the uh, list for teams. If you would like to make a comment or comment again, uh, please go ahead and type your name in the chat. Um, otherwise, we'll just continue with in-room comments. Thank you, Michelle. The next commenter in the room is Kathy Squires. Hi. Um, I live in Montpelier now. I've been out of state most of my life, and but I also grew up in this area. Um, this is a new issue for me, and so I don't know all the details. Um, I'm not articulate about all the chemicals and so forth, so forth. But what I'm concerned about, what I've read, is that there's no way, there's no treatment available to be able to separate out the chemicals, such as PFAS chemicals, out of our waste treatment. And so, it, it, in my understanding, is PFAS are already in our water systems and in our sewage, and we have no way of separating them. And my question is, how are we going to separate them? And then, what are we going to do with it? Because my understanding, again, is these chemicals, and not just PFAS, these chemicals are very long life lived. And so that is my concern. Let's do Thank you. Thank you. Our next commenter is S. Christopher Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, I'm sorry if there's just a squiggle in front of your name and I read it as an S. Well, it is actually. That's oh, right. That's correct. Excellent. Like that F. Scott Fitzgerald, you know? Well, uh, except I don't even, the S doesn't even stand for anything. Um, so, I'm puzzled about making comments tonight. And everything's been said. There's nothing more to say. Um, but I, I do want to ask one thing. Do you, do you all know how many people work at ANR? 2,000? About, no, it's much less than that. It's in the hundreds. Well, anyway, my, my feeling and my thought is that um, I would like it that you all be required to listen to everything you've heard tonight. Instead, three people have listened to it. And, oh yeah, it's recorded. It's going to go back. And you all are going to sit there and look at look through it and, or listen to it and say, oh, isn't he a jerk? Oh, did you see what color shirt he's got on? It's, people have spoken with a lot of passion and a lot of knowledge, and it ain't going to get there. And it just really bothers me. That's all I have to say. I have a 
uh, this year at least is Jay Walsh. My name is Jay Walsh. I'm a resident of Newport. Um, I've worked with the Dump Group in the past and I support them. Um, I'm going to say first off that I'm extremely disappointed in uh, this meeting tonight, in the attendance of this meeting tonight. We had probably three times more people in Newport. I think that it's a failure on the part of A&R and uh, the uh, municipality here of uh, uh, Montpelier to get this information out to the public. There should be a hundred people in this room. The information that, that is, uh, uh, this is so extreme uh, an issue that there should be more participation by the public and A&R with a face-to-face, -face, back and forth answer, uh, question and answer period. This is ludicrous the way that you guys handled it, these meetings. Said, saying that, what, just going to briefly uh, give you a, a quick story that is a little uh, more uplifting. When I grew up in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, we had a, uh, a river, the National River, that ran through that, uh, that town. That river was a different color every single day from the uh, paper mills and textile mills. Not just a little different color, like this, red, like this, blue, green, orange, every single day. And, and it stunk as well. One woman, Marion Stoddard, in the 1960s took up the challenge to face against these uh, corporations and clean up that river. In the 1980s, that river was cleaner than any other river in the United States. So I'm telling you, just one person here in this room that represents uh, Montpelier going and calling out other people and getting to your uh, city council and getting them to stop this leachate can happen. This one woman led that charge. You can do it. It took her 20 years, but she was unrelentless. What I need to say is that we came here, uh, some group uh, of Dump and I came here in 2018 to warn uh, your mayor, Mary Watson, of the concerns of this leachate being dumped into the Dog River and that these chemicals pass through uh, your wastewater treatment plant directly into the Dog River. I apologize that we didn't follow up on that, uh, to, to follow up with the people we spoke to here and to her, because following that meeting, we got back to Newport only to find that the city council there overturned their decision not to take the leachate by influences that are in this room that I don't need to mention. And that, uh, so we were faced with that challenge and then we had to actually bring a lawsuit against A&R who deferred that to Casella and sue them to stop uh, the leachate from being dumped into our river. You don't need to do that. You have the power to stop that leachate tomorrow by telling your city councilors, we don't want it. Tell your mayor, we don't want it. We don't care what the amount of money you receive is for it. Five cents a gallon for tens of millions of, of uh, toxic chemicals is not sufficient. There's no reason for dumping this into the river. This is part of the report, right from Casella, their laboratory report. This is just some of the toxic chemicals that are in that leachate. There's over 150, almost 200. The ones I've highlighted here are cancer-causing uh, and uh, endocrine, uh, endocrine uh, uh, affecting chemicals as well. That's, this is just a few of them. Okay, this is the top components going, going into your river. A&R is not even following their own permit requirements to prevent the introduction of pollutants in, into the wastewater treatment plant. It says clearly in their Title 40, and this is uh, the Clean Water Act, Title 40, 403, 2, the objectives of the general pretreatment regulations by es establishing responsibilities for government and industry to implement national pretreatment standards, this regulation fulfills three objectives. B of those three is prevent the introduction of pollutants into water treatment facilities which will pass through the treatment works or otherwise incompatible with such works. It says that right in their, their permit. They should have 
stop that permit and address that with the, uh, the polluters to begin with right at that point. PFAS and PFOAs and other chemicals pass directly through the treatment plant untreated. Casella knows this. It's in their own engineering reports. a and knows this. They've stated that clearly. As the, and as the A&R presenter stated right here, that your city does not have to accept this. Just their issuing the permit does not require you to accept this leachate to be dumped into your river. You can say no. This permit, in, in which I don't agree with the, the, the uh, discharge permit, as well as the uh, uh, being combined with this pretreatment scheme that they're coming up with, developed by uh, for the last year with private talks back, well, not private talks, maybe they're public, between A and R every day, talking back and forth between themselves and, and Casella to how to make this work. Okay. This is being expedited because Casella knows, as does a and R, the EP regulation, new EPA regulations are coming. They want to get this in under the wire. As with any corporation facing changes in the law, they are working hard to get, get in under the current regulations so that uh, they are less stringent than what's coming. Please, please, I'll be happy to come down. Members of Dump will come down to your city council meeting. We will help uh, you uh, combat this. Stop this now. It is the only way to keep this leachate from coming in to, to this town or this state from over the border. Not to mention that the leachate that's coming in here is not just from um, Casella's uh, dump. It's, it's from waste all over the, the, uh, the surrounding states. That waste is being brought in by, by Casella to that dump. That's being diluted down to this leachate, which is being dumped into Vermont rivers. The same thing goes for New Hampshire. Almost 50% of the waste that's going into the landfill there that, that leachate is derived from is coming from Vermont. It's, coming, you know, it's not coming from Vermont, but it's coming from uh, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, you know, surrounding uh, states. So this needs to stop. There has to be another method. We don't have to take it. It's not our problem. They, they get paid to take this waste in. Please, pass this information on to your uh, your fellow uh, uh, people here in Montpelier, get them to stand up to the city council, get them to say the money is not enough to poison this community and to poison all the communities down the river uh, of Montpelier. Thank you very much. The last commenter we have had a question mark, uh, Christine Burris. <laughs> It's Christy Benson. I don't really have anything else to add, so I'll just thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to the end of our com of our commenters who have uh, signed up. And Michelle, anybody else online or no? Sounds like not. Speaker. That would be helpful. Michelle, anyone else online? Uh, no. Thank Great. you. Well, thank you all for attending tonight. Thank you for your comments. And um, I guess our meeting's over. So thank you. Mm -hmm.